What's going on everybody? It's the Bearded One back with another beer review. Um, I haven't put out a couple videos in a couple of days. I've kind of missed my schedule. Part of that's laziness, part of it's time. Um, for any of you out there follow, you know, following me that have a full-time job, you know how sometimes, especially if you work in a plant, how crazy the hours can be sometimes. And today, um, I start going to second shift temporarily for roughly a month. And so I'm hoping maybe that'll be easier for me to find some time to review some things because uh, my son will be taking a day nap and you know, I can review during his nap or whatever. Um, probably can't finish these beers because I'll have to drink them before work and uh, you know, I'm not an advocate of drinking before, prior to work. But nevertheless, let, I digress. I, I plan on getting back into the schedule. Um, I plan to actually release this video. As soon as I get done filming it, I'll cut it and send it out. Just because this particular PSA, if you will, uh, is in this uh, video. And then I still have a backlog of stuff in case I can't get to reviews. And... Um, you know, just continue to look for Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And uh, if overtime picks up, I'm hoping overtime picks up. Um, I found a turkey fryer slash homebrew kit at Lowe's under the Loco brand. Uh, now I know I know of morebeer.com. I know of Northern Brewer. You know, I know of these websites, but... Um, I feel like for practicality purposes and, and maybe... Letting people know there's options out there at, at Lowe's, uh, you know, I could get one of these kits and it would help get me off the ground uh, as far as home brewing goes. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I hope to, in the future, sometime, I don't want to make a hard promise, you know, a hard date, but uh, sometime in the future, hopefully the near future, I can finally start home brewing and putting home brewing content up for you guys. All right. All that aside, you know what's here. These beers don't need an introduction. That's why I didn't bother to introduce them or bring them out. It is 90, 75, and 60 minute IPA from Dogfish Head Brewing. Uh, this beer in particular seems to be like a very celebrated classic beer. Um, this one, to, you know, if, if we were to go in order of which beer came first, it would be the 90 came first, then the 60, and then 75. It's like a seasonal, uh, fun, experimental beer. I read on the website that uh, Dogfish kind of plays around with 75 minute, but you can almost guarantee uh, 75 minute is brewed in maple syrup barrels. So that that's uh, kind of where 75 minute comes into um I did. I did go on the website, so I so I'm back on. You know, in the spirit of the show of, of providing fun information, and this line of beer uh, has the coolest origin story I think I've ever heard of beer. Like, I got excited to film this episode when I read uh, how Sam Caglioni, or however you pronounce his name, uh, the headmaster of Dogfish, uh, invented 90 minute IPA. Uh, he was watching a cooking show and he noticed uh, the chef the chef was teaching people how to make soup and over the course of I don't know X minute X amount of minutes or you know the amount of time doesn't really matter but he was showing that you can uh, provide a really nice flavorful soup uh, not something that you know where the flavor dies off after a while in the boil of the soup if you continuously pepper the soup and so he had like a eureka moment and decided to apply that soup strategy of continuously peppering soup to beer which would be obviously continuously hopping the beer for 90 minutes or 75 minutes or 60 minutes and in the beginning how did he do that because i'm not sure this kind of technology was around in the 90s. Um, beer was still pretty primitive in those days. Even though we were making really good beer in the 90s, I think the technology hadn't caught up with the industry yet. Um, if you disagree with that or you, you know, if you're a beer historian, please put some information in the comments so we can all grow and learn um, about the 90s. But um, 
he went to a thrift store and bought one of those electric football games. You know where you, it's got the football guys on pegs and they're they're on tracks and. and uh, you know, I've never played an electric football game, but I've seen them before, and, you know, you got the buttons that control them. He turned that into uh, a continuously hopping machine. I don't know what it looks like. Uh, I don't... Here, while I'm talking, maybe maybe I can uh, put it on screen. That would be pretty cool uh, to find. But, yeah, he invented, you know, like that continuously hopping machine and, and hopped his beard. I don't didn't see anything on like a patent or he invented the continuously hopping machine or anything, but he jerry rigged one up and uh, came out with these fantastic beers. Now, obviously, they've refined it. He's not continuously hopping with an electric football game anymore, but um, that's how it all started. Really cool origin story, in my opinion, for ninety minute IPA. Um, while my tablet is loading up, we'll go ahead and get into the pours. Uh, I do want to say this is um, this is a direct comparison video, so this won't be a formal review. I'm not going to give any of these beers a grade. I probably will uh, decide which one I like. I probably will rank them from least favorite to most favorite. Um, and um, I'll do it that way. Uh, but I don't really like doing like a formal grading review uh, when I'm trying to just compare and contrast uh, beers because that's really the point of, of comparing and contrast. I'm not really trying to decide how good it is. I'm just trying to decide the differences between the beers. Uh, yeah, while that's loading up, we'll go into the pour. So here's 90 minute IPA. We'll go ahead and do this one since it's the OG. So don't, these none of these beers are fresh, by the way. I apologize for that. That's gonna. Uh, I know it's gonna. I know it's gonna hurt the integrity of the comparison, but uh, I, you know I sat on seven. You know I'll even read the bottling dates on here. Uh, there was a bottling date on this. Here it is, December fifth, twenty nineteen. So yeah couple months old not very fresh um, September 26th 2019 so yeah 75 minute is pretty old but it was aged in maple syrup cask so I'm hoping uh, and what's the ABV on this thing and 7.5 percent alcohol so I'm hoping hoping maybe the alcohol and that barrel aging uh, the cask aging uh, Helps 75 minute hold up in this review. These are also supposed to be imperialized IPAs, so yeah, there's 75 minute. Here, I'll spread the bottles out so you guys can get a look at the beers better. And then here's 60 minute. 60 minute is the most fresh. Uh, January 2nd, 2020, so two months old. Still pretty old for an IPA. Um, I know I'm breaking the cardinal law here, but I do want to add, um, it's best to drink IPAs fresh because IPAs, uh, hops take damage quickest over time. Uh, that's what's gonna go out in your beer over time uh, quickest. So yeah, there's the beers. Um, and so it's best to drink your IPAs fresh. Let me see if I can find that picture right quick. So if you'll just uh, bear with me. Sam Caglione, the electric football. Hop. Hopper. Images. Hmm. Oh well, we. I can't find it, and I only have so much time for these videos. And I know your your time is precious too, so I won't drag it on. Um. 
I do plan on doing an individual formal review for each of these beers in the future. Uh, also to give these beers uh, a, um, a proper fair shake uh, at a fresher time. So maybe we can find that picture later and put it in a different content. Uh, as you can see, uh, I don't know if you can tell real well, the head retention kind of varies on these beers. Um, this one is a lot thinner. It's almost a just a thin film. There's a lot of lacing on here, and I get a little bit of legs on here. Um, what is the alcohol content on here? Um, Nine percent. So yeah, there's going to be legs on here. Um, this one seems to be the most frothy. Again, there's some lacing, a little bit of uh, legs on here as well at 7.5%. And then right here at the end, it seems to be kind of in the in between right here, although there's no lacing and I don't get really any alcoholic legs on here. 6% um, ABV, so 60 minute being the uh, most sessionable of the line. Uh, I also want to say there is a 120 minute IPA. Um, it is a special release by Dogfish Head. It's pretty expensive. I would say it's like 15 to 20 dollars for one bottle, although it comes in a pretty big bottle. I've never seen one in person, um, but that 120 minute IPA would make up the complete uh, minute IPA line. Um, I just I live in Alabama and our limit is 13.9 percent ABV. We can't get any beer. Uh, we could probably make some beer higher than that in Alabama and not tell anybody, but we can't have any beer uh, on the shelves for public uh, consumption uh, above 13.9 percent. So that's why 120 minute IPA is not here. Uh, maybe in the future I'll be able to get my hands on some. Who knows? Um, appearance wise. I feel like 75 and 90 minute are right, the same beer appearance wise. That same really deep golden amber color. Um, it's a little murky, although I don't know if there's any cold chill here because of the age. I decided not to warm them up too much. Um, and there is the same amount of carbonation going on and I feel like there's some activity going on in here. Um, and then here 60 minute stands out. Now, there's cold chill here, I don't know if that uh, pertain, you know, I don't know if that's contributing to the murkiness in here. It seems like it's clearer than these two beers, although I can see through every beer at least a little bit. Uh, there's still bubbles and, and action and volatility going on in here, um, but it's definitely lighter than these two. I, I don't know what contributes to that. Maybe they used different malt in here. I know malt can contribute to the uh, color of a beer. Uh, this one seems to be more of a gold and less of an amber uh, like these two. Um, let's get into the aroma. Obviously I pick up on the hops now with the age. I feel like for 90 minute I you know with the, this being an Imperial IPA, I feel like it's pretty uh, pretty tame. Um, and that's my fault. Again, it's not blaming Dogfish Head. I get, uh, it almost comes off as a, like uh, a German noble hop. I'm getting a really sweet grassy. Uh, is it floral? Yeah, it, this beer leans more towards sweet, not as bitter, at least in the uh, in the aroma. I, th I believe there's a heavy presence of floral scented hops in here. Um, kind of earthy, kind of floral, smells like flowers. Just I'm getting a touch of caramel in here as well, so maybe they use some caramel malt or something. I didn't look at the malt bill. I don't like to look at malt bills. I don't like to look at flavor notes. I just feel like it plays with my head when I feel like I already know what's going on in these beers. But yeah, uh, a little bit of caramel here to sweeten up the beer. 
um, and then some floral and grassiness playing on in there and, and that would make that nose. So for 75 minutes, I'm really curious to smell this one the most. This one's deeper. This one, uh, this one's definitely more on the piney side. I feel like you need a coffee bean or something. I feel like back to back to back, it's really going to be hard to uh, feel confident about uh, aroma lingering in my nose for each beer. But I can definitely smell difference in this beer. Definitely pinier, earthier. Uh, I feel like this beer is going to be a little more bitter than 90 Minute. One more time, one more time. I'm really looking for that maple syrup and I don't feel like I'm catching it. There's an underlying sweetness here. Uh, I don't know if that's from the malt or that maple syrup. Uh, I'm having a hard time triggering, uh, you know, really triggering it in my brain as to what that is. But there's definitely like some sort of an underlying sweetness here, um, which is very good. It, it, it uh, plays nice with that, that really piney, earthy uh, hop aroma in here. So this one is smelling really, really so, really delicate here. I don't know if that helped at all, but this this one, 60 minute, has a really delicate nose. I think there's a touch, I think there might be a touch of age on this one. Um, I'm not sure, maybe I'm getting, uh, maybe I'm getting the garlicky onion thing that people get from hops. Maybe that's what I'm getting. There's just a unique hop smell, hop aroma that I'm not sure I can place place it on. It's unfamiliar territory for me. Uh, it's a really delicate nose here as well. Um, I don't know what to think about 60 minute IPA, but um, nevertheless, let's get into them. And I'm gonna start with 60 and then I'll work my way up the ABV ladder. So yeah, definitely this thing, uh, 60 minute cannot handle, uh, 60 minute cannot handle being aged for very long, for sure. This is uh, really faint, really subtle. Um, It's just a little bit of pine, a little bit of hot bitterness. Uh, I feel like there's some malty, crackery bitterness going on in here. Yeah, this beer needs a fair shake bad. Um, this beer is the freshest beer out of all these beers, and and um, I, I really think this beer needs a fresh shake. And maybe maybe we'll do if I can find these three beers um, fresh. Uh, maybe we'll do you know a fair shake comparison video. Um, but I am getting um, I am getting some hot bitterness and a little bit of pine grassy flavor going on in here. It 
because again, I think it's a little too old. Nothing on dogfish yet. It's all it's all my fault for waiting way too long for this video. So here's the one I'm most interested in. 75 minute IPA. You, once again, a unique hot flavor. I feel like this is kind of floral too. Um, I've already forgotten what I said. Uh, oh yeah, I said this one was a lot more piney and earthy than a 90 minute. Um, there is pine and earth in here, but I want to say there's like a floral complexity to these hops. Maybe they put uh, uh, quite a variety of hops in these in this 75 minute. Yeah, I, I think I get the maple syrup, but it's way back there on the back end. You gotta dig for it, you gotta look for it. Um, it just kinda coats the tongue. And, you know, for as it's aged, if I was to give this beer a formal review, which I'm hunting, I'm hunting this down next holiday season. Um, even at, even as old as it is, uh, I'm excited to try this at a fresh date. This beer is pretty dang good, even as faint and as subtle as everything is. Yeah, just that, that, that piney, earthy, maybe a touch of floral, I don't know. Um, that, that maple syrup kind of rides there on the, on, on the tongue. It's just real subtle, real faint. You got to look for it. Kind of a letdown. As it dries, I will say, so far, both of these beers have been drying beers. Uh, IPAs usually are, but uh, just for your sake, they do finish pretty dry. And the maple syrup comes out a little bit as it's drying. Um, there might be a, a, just a tinge of like caramel, caramel type malt used in here or something. Something I think is giving off like a caramel esque thing. I went in one more time to see if that the, the wood uh, was giving off like a vanilla character like oak can do sometimes uh, and I'm not getting that here. Um, overall, decent beer, solid beer. Here's a 90 minute, the OG, the original minute IPA. Tons more caramel here. Very well balanced. Reminds me a lot of Celebration IPA from Sierra Nevada. Forgot to cleanse my palate after 75 minutes. Yeah, it's it, 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 right there with Celebration IPA, in my opinion, and my Celebration IPA, if you've seen the video or haven't seen the video, was a 2016 vintage. Uh, so I, I'm going to have to put this and Celebration IPA in a beer fight. 
I'm, I'm going to have to fight those two beers out and see which one I like better. Um, but yeah, a, caramel and then as far as the hops go. You know, because of the the age of this beer, the hops really um, fall short on the palate. Um, they're just they're, it almost it almost comes across as a really well balanced and not even an IPA. Um, I get hot bitterness and just anything else is just kind of subdued, uh, and that's my fault, guys. You know. I, I kind of ruined the integrity of this video waiting so long, but I didn't want to buy three different six packs just to make one video. Um, IPA is not really my favorite style. Forgive me, IPA lovers. Um, so I was just waiting and waiting and waiting for a single. And you know, as soon as I saw a single of these three beers, I got them, and uh, it just took a while. But uh, if I was going to rank these beers. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll still rank them. I like 75 minute the best. I think I'm going to put 90 minute right behind it. And then uh, 60 minute at the back. Age probably has a lot to do with this. Although, I still feel like I'm getting the, the base bedrock uh, character of these beers. So I'm not sure a fresher date would change these rankings, but I think it would make the experience a lot more enjoyable and it would make my uh, my comparison and contrast uh, a lot more accurate, I think. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Uh, sorry for the awkward silence there, guys. Um, I think that's, you know, that's going to wrap me up. Uh, it's Dogfish Head, uh, 90, 75, and 60 minute IPA. Uh, we will be doing a fair shake, uh, formal review of each of these beers, and then I will, uh, I probably do a, a revisit compare and contrast if I can get them uh, fresher. So until next time, guys, cheers.